Yeah. Okay. Till now, we talked about expectations. I want to talk about disappointments. What is a disappointment? How does that work? Without disappointments, how can you have expectations? Okay, so I expect something, I don't get it. Meaning you were thinking about some kind of a reward. Yeah, yeah, I depicted something good in the future, that something's shining from afar, and I found out that it wasn't what I thought it is, and then the expectation turns into disappointment. Meaning you had some place to get pleasure, a good feeling, a nice attitude from some kind of a dish, something, doesn't matter what. And this place maybe got a bit, but not according to what you expected. Right. So the empty part you have left, all of it, or a part of it, is called disappointment. What's the point of the mechanism of disappointment? What is its purpose and creation to aim you more precisely at the goal? Now, okay, now I want to return to relationships. You gave Tal a very good example, but pay attention that in life, time and time again, we get disappointed, but by it, we teach ourselves, we clear things up, we aim ourselves more and more precisely, more correctly towards a more exalted, more preferable goal, more beneficial goal, meaning the disappointments are something positive. Why exactly? Because they help me to more correctly aim myself at what's worthwhile. So suppose I wanted a good job, I got it, I feel that it's unsatisfactory, and I'll start thinking what will satisfy me. Yeah. Returning to the example you gave with relationships, after you explained what is the purpose, the role of these two mechanisms of expectation and disappointment, they're pulling us and pushing us all the time. Without that, I'm not a human being. I'm not alive. I'm, I'm a dummy. I'm still. Expectation and disappointment. Expectation and disappointment. It's constantly advancing me. It's like a wheel that even though that it's going forward, it also has to go backward. Expectation and disappointment. Expectation and disappointment. And this is how I work. And actually, thanks to that, I advance. Hypothetically speaking, could there be a situation where a person's advancing without any expectations or disappointments because disappointments uh, it's unpleasant yes on condition that he accepts the disappointment as an expectation what meaning that he is above disappointments and expectations slowly he uses the expectations and disappointments as something which advances him towards the goal he wants to achieve. That there is a goal above the expectations and the disappointments. Like I'm sitting on a wheel on top and the wheel's turning and I'm advancing. But when you define the mechanism of expectations, it also defines where am I headed? I'm expecting something. Yes, but in order to reach the goal, you have to change. Look what you have here, how it works in the wisdom of Kabbalah. The only thing that exists in the wisdom of Kabbalah not existing in any other place. You're constantly advancing towards something in life. You get disappointed, go in a different direction, get disappointed, and so on and so forth. I don't. Why? because there is a target that I'm locked on. And now I'm headed towards that goal. And every time that I'm headed towards that goal and I get disappointed and I head towards it and get disappointed, these actions of expectation and disappointment, expectation and disappointment. For me, these are actions which constantly aim me in the same direction. 
and I'm like a wheel. I both go backwards, but along with it I go forwards. And this is how I advance.